Once you went to that AVID presentation in 1990 and you took that year off, did you go from being an assistant editor to then making the full-fledged jump to just an uh, editor on your own? I don't know what the exact designation would be. But full editor. Full editor, okay. Yeah, so this is, you know, this is one of the, uh, you know, beauties of, of being in the right place at the right time and uh, synchronicity, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, I fell in love with this, this computer program and, and, and computer system, the Mac. And uh, I had already gotten a couple of uh, associate editor credits, additional editor credits on film. I received an associate editor credit on War of the Roses, an additional editor credit on Little Man Tate, and I had cut a, a very low budget film for Roger Corman, uh, and I got my first full feature credit as an editor. So, you know, I was really at that place where I was trying to make the leap to full editor. And then the Avid came along and sort of rocked my world. And um, after I finished, uh, kind of hanging out with my dad for a year and learning about the Avid and things like that. Uh, we, we have a friend from New York who actually came out to California with us back when our family moved out here and he was working for my dad. His name is Steve Cohen. And Steve was an editor also. He was an assistant for my dad back in the day. And um, Steve is an incredibly bright guy and, and you know, really... Uh, was on top of technology also. And um, he was working with a company called Montage, which had a comp which had an editing system called the Montage Picture Processor, which was used on, on a couple of big films. And it was a series of Betamax decks that would simulate nonlinear editing, but it was still linear tape. I wasn't very interested in it. But anyway, Steve was into it, and he was learn, you know, and he was working with that. But then they came up with a digital version of that. Supposedly had a digital version of that. And Steve took a job, and he asked if I wanted to assist him uh, on that project, and he would give me a couple of scenes to cut. So it would be like another associate editor credit, maybe. And um, we started that job, and the product was still in beta. The montage picture processor was still in beta, but it kind of looked like the Avid and it had similarities, but really was nothing like it. And, uh, you know, I kind of wished it was the Avid, but I really wanted to do a film digitally and Steve was game. So, and it was for HBO. So, uh, we did it. Uh, we started and to make a long story short, about seven days into the process, excuse me, this system just wasn't working. And as I remember it, Steve might have another memory, but as I remember it, I said, Steve, we should really, let's, let's get an Avid. Let's transition to the Avid. We're only seven days in. We're not that far behind. I'm telling you, that sucker's going to work. Anyway, uh, we, we did transition to the Avid. And, and Steve had a relationship with the Avid folks also. Uh, Bill Warner, who in, invented the Avid, um, they, they had met or something like that. And uh, so we got an Avid. And the, the post super at HBO did not want us to use the Avid. Um, you know, he was very resistant to it. And, uh, but we ended up doing the show on the Avid. And uh, Avid even sent out some engineers and worked with us when we had bugs and things like that. And one of Avid's uh, editors on staff, uh, a guy named Tom Ohanian, came out. And Tom's kind of like a, a legend in the digital editing world. Uh, and uh, he taught us how to convert the film uh, that we had cut digitally to the actual film to cut negative. So that was a tricky process because we were still working with film uh, and there were all kinds of technical sort of you know hurdles that we had to overcome uh, but um, we did it it was cool and uh, uh, it was a real we felt it was a real accomplishment because nobody else was working on the avid in in long form at that time uh, and i got a call 
towards the end of that show from someone at Steven Bochco Productions. And uh, they had heard that I had, you know, a lot of experience with the Avid. And they said, hey, you know, we're having some trouble, uh, you know, in terms of getting started, but we're, we're doing this new season or this season of, of this show called Civil Wars on the Avid. Would you, would you come over and talk to us and, and help us out? You know, and I told him, I said, yeah, sure, but, you know, I, I want to I edit. I don't want to assist anymore. And uh, they said, come over, come over, we'll talk. Anyway, to make a long story short, I got the job working for Stephen Bochco Productions as an editor. Um, several of the editors had left. They didn't want to learn edit, uh, digital editing. Uh, a couple of the assistants had left. Um, and uh, I hit it off with those guys. And it... Uh, it was the first, one of the first network television shows to be cut digitally. It was, you know, Civil Wars. And, uh, and that was pretty much it. It, it. it sort of took off from there. I mean, there was Lightworks and people were, were, were you know, also adopting Lightworks. Um, but, uh, but the Avid really sort of like took off like a rocket ship after that. And, um, and after that, those guys, um, after I finished Civil Wars that season, uh, Greg Hoblet, uh, the director of uh, a lot of, you know, seminal shows like L.A. Law and Hill Street Blues and things like that, he asked me to cut the pilot for NYPD Blue, mm -hmm. which was, um, was pretty exciting stuff. So... Uh, you know, I, I owe a lot of it to knowing that machine. You know, I'll just say that right now. <laughs> that I knew how, how to work the Abbott. I was very fast at it. I worked hard. I spent a lot of hours after hours, you know, working on my craft. But it was because it was fun again. You know, just digital editing was, was a blast. And it, it took so much of the drudgery out of it. So, uh, like I say, right place, right time. And, um, and uh, a little bit of luck. Was that common for, for people to just abandon ship because they didn't want to make this transition? I think that, uh, y you know, some of the older guys, yeah, they, they didn't. Uh, I remember reading in The Hollywood Reporter some well-known editor saying something like, if, a, if Picasso were alive today, do you think he would be painting with a computer? You know, and I thought that was kind of a ridiculous thing to say. I thought, well, sure, have you, you, know, have you seen some of these programs? You know, <laughs> what you can do with them? And, uh, you know, there was, you know, it's a generational thing. It's even happening now a little bit because, you know, the Avid is the primary tool for feature films and television. Uh, and, um, but there's a whole new generation of editors that are, that are sort of being birthed at this time. And they grew up with computers and, and editing programs on their computers in elementary school, in grade school. And, uh, you know, iMovie and, and Adobe Premiere, frankly. So, you know, I think that, that it, again, it, it's a generational thing. I think that as a new generation comes along and there's another tool that maybe they came up with, whether it be Final Cut or Premiere or, or what have you, that, um, that y you might see it. A sh another shift, you know, towards another sort of. There, there are people out there who who swear by Premiere, but it's only used by a fraction of the productions that are that are made in Hollywood. So, uh, but I think I think times are changing, and Adobe's putting a real push into you know into sort of capturing the imagination of the Hollywood market. I mean, look, Fincher uses it, the Coen Brothers use it you know, and, and so on and so forth. So I think it's, it's just a matter of time where they're, where they're able to make some more, some more inroads. This one guy who I actually replaced, he moved to Idaho. I mean, he just like got out of the business. Wow. But you, you gotta understand, it's just like, it can be so frightening. And, and sure. I've even had, I've even encountered it a little bit because I remember when editors started to be expected to do so many other jobs because they could and producers knew they could. Mm -hmm. Like I remember on one job I said, okay, well the cut's looking pretty good, let's just turn it over to sound and they can fill it in. And, and, and the director said, no, let's do the sound here. And I was oh. like, oh, 
okay, well, that's what you want to do. Let's do the sound here. But you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, it was like a, such a paradigm shift. Yeah. That, anyway. But it sounds like it's just sort of the like growing pains of all technology that the last generation doesn't trust the, the you know. You know, those sound editors that I worked with, um, this is another interesting story. These sound editors that I worked with um, back in the Back to the Future days, um, I had really gotten into digital and we were cutting a film over at Warner Brothers. And, uh, you know, some of them were still cutting on, on film. And, and I said, you got to learn these digital systems or you're not going to be able to work anymore. You know, so it got to the point where I was saying to friends, you, you know, learn Pro Tools, man, because that's the way that this job is going to be done. But you know, old habits die hard for a lot of people. So, sure. sure. You know, and and there was a lot of fear. The 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 smarter old ones and the and the younger ones learned Pro Tools, you know, and they kept working. So 